Okay guys, so today we are going to have today's lecture via this particular piece of software, uh, Screenomatic. Hopefully it works quite well. Um, so today's topic is adapting to cultural difference. So obviously for most of you guys going on your year abroad, this will certainly be the longest amount of time that you will have been in contact with a culture and um, that is in many ways different to Irish culture. Luckily, I suppose in modern society, and we've all done quite a lot of traveling and we're surrounded by people from different cultures so things are a little different nowadays than they used to be people are much better at dealing with cultural difference but still living in another culture and adapting to cultural difference there can be quite tricky so today we're going to talk about how um you guys are uh, the kind of the processes you guys will go through when you're going to be living in another country. So um, the first thing I want to chat to you guys about is the whole idea of um, intercultural sensitivity. So before you kind of continue with this, just pause the recording for a second and have a think about what exactly intercultural sensitivity what might mean. Um, really, I suppose what we see anything to do with intercultural nowadays, we see lots of different terminology. We see things like intercultural awareness, intercultural Intercultural sensitivity and um, intercultural competence and they all have very different meanings even though people tend to mix them up indiscriminately. So have a little think for a second about um, intercultural sensitivity. Okay, so what exactly then is intercultural sensitivity? So what we, when we're talking about sensitivity, we're talking about the ability to function effectively in an environment. Um, and that really depends on our ability to recognize and respond to values and expectations of others in a, an appropriate way, okay? So, you know, one of the big differences when we're dealing with people from another culture is that they have different values and different expectations about behavior than necessarily we do in our culture. And it's about being open to the fact that there are differences there and also being sensitive to them, okay? So it's about this ability to, to react and to respond appropriately to these differences, okay? And really, I suppose, you know, all of the research out there shows us that intercultural sensitivity, it's not just an important part of the overbroad context. Really what it is, is it's so important to every aspect of modern life and work in that we constantly have to deal with people from different cultural backgrounds. So developing intercultural sensitivity is really crucial for um, being able to function in a globalized academic and professional world. Okay, so when we're talking about this, this is not just necessarily specific to the year abroad context, but it's also um, very relevant to all of your futures and your future careers. So being able to behave in an interculturally sensitive way is going to be something really good for you guys. Okay. So what we know from the research literature is that intercultural sensitivity, it's possible to develop a basic level of intercultural sensitivity through training and education. And I guess really that's what we're trying to do here, right? We're trying to get you guys started um, and train you guys a little bit on, you know, what are the various things that happen uh, when you're going through a kind of an intercultural transition, when you're trying to you know, navigate the, the, the various hurdles that come up in intercultural situations. So we know it is possible to develop develop a very basic level of intercultural training and sensitivity. Um, but really, I suppose the most effective and transformative way of doing it is certainly within the year abroad context, because you're going abroad and you're immersing yourself in another culture whereby, you know, you're exposed to cultural difference constantly and you're having to navigate that. Um, OK, so, um, you know, one might argue as well that, you know, we have an awful lot of international students on the university campus and therefore, you know, when we're in this kind of culturally diverse student body and, um, you know, education has become so internationalized now nowadays that is that not just as transformative? No, well, it isn't as transformative because we know also as well from a lot of research literature that you can witness an event without ever experiencing it. OK, so witnessing it being that you are an observer of the event, you're looking at it from the outside without actually experiencing it and without you taking part in the process and potentially changing as a result of it. OK, and even within the year abroad context, Unfortunately, we do see that it's possible that students can participate in a, in a study abroad program without ever experiencing the culture in which they reside. And it's often referred to as the Erasmus bubble. And there's a lot of um, research literature out there about this idea that when Erasmus students or international students go abroad, you know, there's a 
obviously a, a, a certain level of um, you know apprehension and it's quite a daunting experience so people tend to clump together in, in a kind of little group of Erasmus students for solidarity and and while that's understandable and, and, and will certainly happen at the very beginning what you need to do is you need to try and move away from that because you don't want to create this little bubble that you live in for the entire time and miss out on all of the wonderful uh, intercultural experiences that you guys are possibly going to have. Um, so also from, from all of the research that's been done into the year abroad context up until now, and if we look specifically at intercultural sensitivity, we know there are a range of factors that will have an impact on the extent to which someone develops intercultural sensitivity. The first is the duration of the student sojourn abroad. So obviously, if you're only abroad for a couple of weeks, then you know the extent to which you are going to engage in a process of developing intercultural sensitivity is very limited. Luckily for you guys, you're all going abroad for a full year um, to one particular uh, lingua culture, one dominant lingua culture in this case the German speaking contexts of Austria uh, and Germany and um, what you really are uh, doing there is you are creating a major platform for developing intercultural sensitivity a year abroad like this is really fantastic in giving you guys the opportunities to do it um, your entry target language level is really important obviously a certain amount of intercultural understanding, you know, so knowing about another culture can happen through uh, a medium uh, and in a lingua franca medium, just like English, where people can talk about differences between their cultures. But really, I suppose intercultural sensitivity goes that step further. And in order to be sensitive to the values and expectations of another culture, it's really important to show respect for that culture and also show some sort of interest in the culture. And part of that is also the language. So, you know, the higher your target language level when entering um, a new cultural environment like this, the higher the likelihood is that you're going to develop intercultural sensitivity. Um, it obviously then goes without saying that the extent of your target language use has a major impact on that as well. So, you know, obviously, as we mentioned as well, if you're going to stay in the Erasmus bubble and you're going to speak English the entire time, then really what you're doing is limiting the amount of intercultural sensitivity that you are uh, developing and displaying. Whereas if you were really immerse yourself um, in this context in the German speaking culture, you know, and you're using German uh, on a daily basis significantly, then that's going to increase your possibility um, for developing intercultural sensitivity. Um, and we know this because, as we all know, and you've discussed up in the module up until now, there's a very strong connection between language and culture. Language and culture are like brothers, they grew up together and they um, they influence one another. So really in order to fully try and understand and become sensitive to a particular culture, then language use is a really important part of that. Obviously then exposure to the language and culture in the study and the work setting is really important. So you obviously, there's only so much you can obviously give to the process. You want to make sure that uh, you are taking advantage of every uh, possible exposure to the language that exists there. And that can be from simple things like chatting to your work colleagues on a daily basis in the language, watching TV through the, through the target medium rather than maybe going online and watching the usual things you do all through the medium of English. And interacting with people constantly on a daily basis. Yes, yeah, so you really want to try and expose yourself to as much of the language and the culture as possible. Don't lock yourself away because you really what you're doing is robbing yourself uh, of, a, of an amazing experience. Um, the availability of preparation and mentoring is something that has emerged in the last number of years within the research, showing us that it's really important that people are prepared sufficiently before going on the year abroad experience so that, you know, you're not expecting too much of yourselves, that you just land there with zero uh, awareness or, or openness to the various things that are coming at you so that if you're prepared somewhat beforehand then you have a much better opportunity of maximizing the um, impact of the experience and that's really what we're talking about in this module we're trying to prepare you guys and as much as we can for the various things that are going to come at you on the experience so that you're prepared at least a little bit to grab it to grab the opportunity by the horns and, and really make the most of it um, mentoring is really important too and this is something that we uh, we were trying to do on the module but unfortunately it didn't really quite work out with e-tandem so trying to get people um, to connect with people in the host culture 
culture. And, you know, in a way you kind of have that person as a little bit of a mentor or the person that you can go to with kind of maybe unusual or, or maybe potentially sensitive questions that you can approach these people and ask them. And, and, and you know, there's a kind of an understanding there that... Um, that you have that relationship where you can ask these sort of questions. So mentoring is really important. So if you guys can, in any sort of way, build up any sort of a network of people before you go to your chosen location, that will really stand to you there that you have someone kind of looking out for you. Um, and experiential learning activities are really important. Yeah. So, you know, really, again, this is about throwing yourself into the experience. Don't lock yourself away. Don't just go to your classes, go back to your place, go on WhatsApp and chat to your mates back home. You know, really, you know, grab all of the activities that are around you. Go to the clubs and societies, go on this, go on the city tours, you know, do all this kind of stuff that's offered to you as an as an international uh, student. Um, likewise, if you're working as an ELA and you're invited to one of the teacher's house for dinner one evening or to go to a movie or to go to a play, go for it, do it. These are all really important experiential learning activities. They may not look like a learning activity on the surface, but they certainly are. They're anywhere, any context where you are, you know, using the language and getting a better understanding of the culture is 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 a, is an experiential learning activity and really has the potential to have a really positive experience on on the learning process. And as I mentioned, obviously, just before study week, accommodation is really important. So you know, try and as far as possible not to surround yourself with English native speakers because the temptation is obviously going to be there to retreat into an English speaking bubble and you really want to try and avoid that um, in as much as possible um, but I know obviously pragmatics come into it too so you just have to be um, careful about what you get. Um, okay so now that we've talked a little bit about intercultural sensitivity um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a really important uh, theoretical model that was developed by Bennett um, in 1993, and that's the Developmental Model of Intercultural Sensitivity with the very sexy acronym DMIS. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this intercultural sensitivity model, and it's a developmental model, which is very important because it draws, uh, it brings in the idea that, uh, you know, that in intercultural sensitivity is a is a process, um, and it's developmental. It builds on top of things that you already know. That it's not just a uh, linear uh, process. Where whereby you move from point A to point B and then it's done um, and bagged and, you know, uh, that it's always moving forward. It's a developmental model because it also shows that it's possible to regress at different points in the scale. So, you know, you may be moving along the various stages of the model and then suddenly something might happen which might cause you to regress to a different stage. So it, the, really the, what's important about the model is that it takes into account that, um, you know, the, the, that the, the process isn't necessarily linear and progressive all the time, that there will be setbacks and this can have a, an impact on your intercultural sensitivity. OK, so as we mentioned already, um, intercultural sensitivity is this idea of responding appropriately to values and expectations of a different culture. So another way of looking at it is an individual's reaction to people from other cultures. And that can predetermine an individual's ability to work successfully with those people. So what I guess what we're really talking about here is, is stereotyping. If we have very strong stereotypes in place about a particular culture, that can almost act as a barrier to our ability or at least our perceived ability to work with people from another culture. Okay, so intercultural sensitivity is also about recognizing that, that we have these stereotypes and potentially prejudices against certain particular cultures and that they can they can provide a kind of a blockage in the system and we really have to try very hard sometimes to park those stereotypes uh, and move beyond them okay so we're talking about this DMIS model from Bennett in 2002 um, and uh, it was, you know, further refined then by Hammer and Bennett later that year um, and is very much focused on the whole idea of intercultural sensitivity. OK, so we're just going to stop here for a second and uh, just give you guys a quick minute or two to think about everything we've done. And uh, once you have, you can click on the second part of this lecture and continue. Thanks, guys.